Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to paint, you know, I've been promising the landscapes and stuff, so we're going to go back to that. But once, about once a year or so, I really try to paint one of these uh, little fly fishing scenes or fishing scenes. I like that. We'll do a little distant mountain uh, with some sky, maybe a cloud back through there, some water reflections and stuff. I have a couple of sample photos over there, one from Shutterstock, one from Adobe Stock, and I'm going to kind of combine them and do my own thing. You know what I like to do, do my own thing. So uh, we'll just kind of go along. I kind of sketched out an idea. I like the fisherman on that. I like the light, dark contrast on that one over there. I like the back. Uh, it's a little, a little bit too light right up in through here, but I like the back on uh, that one. So, you know, we'll just kind of combine them through. So the light source here, right this is kind of from the front right so we'll have light to shadow as we put into the mountains there. It's a little bit off. So one of the very first things I do is I decide my light and shadow, how I'm going to do my light and shadow. So I will emulate most of this guy here, which is light on this side, shadow on this side. So when we go to do our mountains and stuff, we'll go light on this side, shadow on this side. Light to the left, or excuse me, to the right shadow to the left okay so we'll have a bit of fun so this is the palette i'm going to use this palette uh here is a uh, part of the painted simply that i use with the painted simply and painted simply is our program where we try to do things as simply as possible in the painted simply i have a lot of different lessons uh for landscapes for portraits for flowers birds all different kinds of stuff and uh, so you can look to those lessons and we have paintedsimply.com which is another website we're updating that website right now so check back with that one quite a bit and it's all free stuff all the information there is free like if you want to get this value scale that i use in so many lessons right through here you can get the gray the blue the red it's all there it's all ready to download all those links to everything are in the video description the list of all the colors that i use here in the video description so look down for that okay i use the fusion brushes i like them sometimes i use some of the bristles and i do different things with them and i'll show you that and uh, let's get into the painting okay so i have my colors down this is the derivan open medium that i have here the matisse derivan which i do like this is our extender medium which is this medium right here which slows down the drying time this is thinner and this other one here is thicker and i have an entire video that I did just about a month and a half ago or so that's down low there that's basically how to use all these different mediums to make your acrylics dry really slow so you can look to that what I'm going to start out with is just some water here so I'll just take some water this is a one inch brush I want to come in here and I'm just going to make some light sky and in that uh, one uh, that I like up there on the top it's kind of a blue violet here so you know, I'll just emulate that blue violet that I see up there. And I think I'll like that. Maybe a little bit of extender. I add extender sometimes, it makes the color thinner, but it makes the color slide over the surface here a lot easier. And that's what I like. And I'm gonna keep the sky and everything here kind of simplistic. And I don't wanna do two big long ones. I wanna do just some short X motions here. Uh, with this color as I apply it here so I can create you know me when I do that atmosphere I like the atmosphere that comes from working the colors now I do like this kind of lighter gray some of that or some of the light clouds that comes through so we might add a little bit of this now the other thing that I do when I'm working with the sky that I do quite a bit is when if I have a lot of auto or fall colors and stuff through here which I'm going to have in there I add some of that fall color into the sky so I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt sienna and see this warm gray it makes here and so I'm going to add some of that into the sky I do it I you know for harmony and you know a good artist will always paint a little bit of harmony into their paintings and so I like to do that I'm going to take a little bit more white here and I'm just going to just lightly just hit it through I'm going to be very very wispy with my painting today and so see I just a little thicker white 
that little thicker white, see how it makes a cloud real quick like that right there? Because the white is thicker and the base that I put down on that is thinner. So I grab the white pure like this. It's thick. It'll go on. It'll have power. And then the more I touch it, the more it softens out. So I don't want to touch it too much here, okay? Now, let's put those back mountains. We want atmosphere to those mountains, so we want to use some of those nice gray colors here. Let's thin this out with a little bit of light. We want these mountains uh, here, the back hills, to get this bluish gray color. And to be real close, let's start out here, real close to the value of the sky so they recede. So, you know, we have this like real grayish kind of color here. And let's just push that in. We'll just draw the mountains and we'll come back and push some lights and darks. Let's put that longer kind of sloping one there. That's a nice little look to it. Thing is, you know, try not to just go one, two, three, four. I used to do that for so many years. Just kind of pushing them in here. And I would line them up like little soldiers. So they get the prettiest when they're when they have some variation to it. Now we'll take maybe a touch more blue. Sometimes I like a little green and red here, but a touch more blue. Let's get that nice gray of that color here. Let's darken it down a little bit, but not tremendous. We don't need a whole bunch of interest back here. We just, that might be too much. So I'll just touch it with my finger and take it off there a bit. But what I like to create is movement. More than anything else, I like little marks here of movement of those colors through here. And that's what's going to give you a lot of interest to those mountains. Let's take some of that, just going to pinch wipe some of that color off of there. Maybe come back up over towards this light that we want to push. We want light to push in here onto the right side. And I'm going to leave some of this this darks and stuff there onto the left side here. So I'll just come back now. This is a big brush and I do like to do it with a bigger brush rather than a smaller brush because it just gives a lot more interest, I feel, to the painting. It's a little, little, a little dark, so we'll lighten that just a bit. So don't take it off, just paint through it. Paint through that, tap through some of those. And you're, you're impressionist, that's what we are. Is, we're not painting realist, we're painting impressionism here. So we're just gonna tap and move and create movement into those back hills. That's all we want, is this color to create this movement here, just like that. We'll add a touch of light here, a little bit of that blue. Let's pull down some of that here. And if you get something that's a little bit wild there, just pinch wipe it on your brush here and create the movement of it here. Little, little brush marks and stuff. And see, that'll make those back hills. Now, up and through here, there's, you know, that darker, you see that darker violet and stuff that we had on that. When we can decide if we want to do that, a little bit of a darker violet color. If we do, if we do add something like this, and especially right up to the front here, let's get just a bit more blue. I'm going to add just a touch of extender here but if we do something like that and add some of these marks up here that make because the darker color brings it forward see and so if we do some of that to bring some of those hills a little bit forward here then we will add this color as well up into the foreground here so and sometimes i'll take this color flip it up over here gray it out okay so it's a softer and maybe a, a shadow or two right up here into the mid-ground area that you find up into these others. So you just don't get this one warm gray and a cooler little gray coming back. So your mountains carry some of these different colors. And uh, let's grab some of these lights that are right here and maybe... Uh, so you can see up on that one reference photo, these will get lights and darks a little bit more up towards the front. And some of the, the mountainscape or some of the um, shapes here get a little bit more extreme. And uh, so we can, we can leave that. 
So here, left side, pull some of that down. I've got a little squeak in my chair today. So we'll push that down. Let's just thin this out right in here, some of this color. Let's pull this down a little further down towards our water and stuff. Okay. Now I'm gonna, I need to define that up a little bit more. I do like that one um, that's right up over there that you can hardly see there, but well, I do like it. Uh, let's put a little blue, a little burnt sienna. I do like the fact that you see it a little bit more cr uh, clear right up to here. So let's bring that in. And remember we're bringing shadow here to the, to the, the left here here we go so that just brings that little edge there let's get a little bit of light so and that's basically all I do with the mountains is you know light I pick a light side and a shadow side and I paint them very casual here I'm going to add a bit of the burnt sienna color because that's the fall color that I want coming kind of forward so maybe a, a touch of that fall color right in there Nice dark, might be too dark, so I'll just take some of it off here. Maybe push into it with the, the light here, back the other way. See, and it just creates some of that interest, see? And you let the viewer's eye kind of paint the scene. That's all I'm going to do, let the viewer's eye paint the scene. So I'm working back to front, and as you come forward, you start to create some more interest, some more lights and darks. Let's take a, I love the warmer colors, light, uh, some of those fall colors, so burnt sienna, yellow oxide, some of this. Let's get some light right in through here. Let's pull some of that right down in through here. As this whole hill comes forward, we can let some of that disappear right up there. But maybe some of that, just like that, just kind of pulls through a nice little plane of light. Grab some of this, maybe a bit more yellow. And this is where I also like, I'll take a smaller brush with this and I'll start to look for areas like interest and just pull across here, here, just like this. Maybe you see some, you know, some working of some bushes or, you know, prairie lands, grasses, that kind of stuff here through it. Now, one of the things I didn't tell you is I'm starting here on a, a 14 by 18 canvas and I gave it a coat of the canvas prep medium and uh, then I, it's not a, this is not a canvas a board 14 by 18 board and then I gave it a coat of the canvas prep medium and then uh, a little bit of white because I wanted a real nice solid white onto this so so that brings that even farther forward. You could have some more, you know, yellows in there. Look, you could have some light greens. You know, if you feel it's all too much the same, this is up to you. You can take a little light green into that and just break up some of that yellow here with a bit of green, which will add quite a bit more interest, color interest as you come forward there. A little bit of greens into there maybe a little too much maybe take some of that out with some yellows paint back and forth as i get closer moving closer to my subject i'll paint more i'll paint more colors and stuff coming forward but you know having a a good line like uh, i can create a good sloped line here maybe right up here like this that's going to head up that slope a bit and then pull down, then what we do is you pull across. This is your nice horizontal. And so when I paint with some of these, I like a strong horizontal and vertical here. And that that's what really gives you the depth or the planes that you're gonna be painting here. Now, let's come forward here. Right up in here, now see, I, I like the look of that dark there. I like some of the colors of the other one, but I like the look of that dark. So I'm gonna, Come right into here with some real dark. These will be some of the darkest colors on the composition. And I'm going to take some burnt sienna, some blue, some violets. We'll add a little green into there. Model this up. And this will be some of the darkest colors right in here. And this is my little number eight flat. 
and you can do this with a bigger brush or whatever. But what I like to do is to drag it and I'll get some real heavy colors. Give some nice, give some nice verticals, some horizontal movements here, vertical movements here. Pull across, keep it very casual, break it up like this. And sometimes as I head down to the water, I'll take this off to the side, thin it out, and pull it down into the water here, which will be the water right down here. Sometimes I'll pull it down this way. Sometimes I'll use a big brush here, but this small brush, you know, and what it was was I uh, I did a lot of, and you've seen me in so many uh, um well, let's say portraits and stuff like that, where I always, I'm a big fanatic of John Singer Sargent. And Sargent, you know, always said, use his larger brush per, per, uh, per painting. But he also said something that was really important that really struck me one time. He said, use your brush as a pencil. And so we use a pencil to sketch something. So I thought, okay, so maybe I should, you know, sometimes in some looks, use the brush more small and do a lot of real sketchy marks to it and create that that look that way with it. And maybe that will uh, give me more interest. And that's what I was trying to drive, is using my brush in a calligraphy kind of way to drive more interest into the painting. And that's what I wanted to do. So I wanna create some of these little bushes and marks and stuff here. Pull down some of this down and stuff to, uh, create this line of bushes and stuff that are going to really go, um, really set this really, and I want it real dark right here where I'm going to have those, that one plane crossing the other here. So, and we'll push that right in there. So that'll make sure it's nice and dark right in there. And what that's going to be is where those, those two cross there. Now get some other colors in there. Let's get some burnt siennas, maybe a little bit more of an orange. Uh, let's get some of that in there. If, this, if you're going to go more fall colors and stuff like that, get some of those other colors working in here. Okay. Let's just grab some of this. See, and I'll, I'll pull strong verticals, horizontals, push up and down a bit. I'm creating color more than anything else. I'm getting a little bit of movement and stuff, but I'm creating color. Let's put some more yellow over there. That would be good over there. Maybe a touch of some of that green into that. You know, we can get a little bit of green. See the colors, the different colors here. We want to create this, this, these rough, these are painterly impressionistic edges. And that's what we want to create. Rough edges here, painterly impressionistic. That's going to be the line of bushes and stuff here. Trees and everything. That's going to, um, basically, uh, we can push this more into a tree. Just push that edge up here, here, like that. Little rounding shape, maybe. See, I just slide my brush. This is my little flat, see? And I kind of sketch with it, like where I want the tree, pushing up and down and around like that, and creating that, that shape. That's what I want is that shape. Maybe this one right here. It doesn't have to be as big. Don't line them up as little soldiers. Try to get different heights and stuff like that so it all looks a little different. Okay, now let's uh, get some of that sky color out of there just a bit. We'll come back in here. Let's add some extender to this color and let's thin this out and move this further down here wiped out my fisherman just a bit but I want to pull this down when you're painting water you have it you know if you're pulling a reflection and stuff you're going to want to pull it down so I just want to pull these colors down I don't need to be perfect perfect with it and I don't want to wipe out completely my drawing there and I want to keep it a little soft so I can change the color easy but I want some of these colors to pull down so let's get some of those colors especially right along that water line, that burnt sienna and that dark there. I want to make my water line here kind of undulate. So I want these colors kind of appearing uh, throughout this, this, whole, this whole 
area right in here. So, you know, highs and lows, in other words, undulating the color around. Pull some of that down, pull it across a bit, get those nice colors, just colors here. And then we'll paint some of those reflections and waters and make it look like we know what we're doing here in just a minute, okay? So we're gonna carry some of that color further down. We're going to put our blues into this. So I'm going to thin this out. And let's just carry some of this. Sometimes I'll just use a, a bigger brush and some extender and just go for it. But this is what I want. See this, this movement of this color here. I want to just grab that through. Just streak it like that so it's not super heavy. So I wiped it with a paper towel. It's not super heavy. And I, but I want to streak it. See we'll pull down to give us some vertical movements like this and then we'll pull across and that's what create the crossing here like i say to you in so many videos creates the movement of the water and the vertical creates the uh, stillness and the reflection so if i took a little green a little bit of the blue and and burnt sienna here a little bit more blue maybe right in here and i pull down like this that's going to give the idea of the reflections here, which we can do right through here. And then this creates the soft movement of it. So even as I'm just laying in the colors here, I'm looking for those blurry colors and lines that I see there. Maybe a little bit of green. Maybe a little green and a little yellow here. Right in here. Let's just grab some of that, pull some of that through green and yellow here that looks pretty good just a bit right through some of the coloring that you see on the now, one of the things I do all the time when I'm painting like this is I'll step back. Get back from your easel. At least, I like to paint for like six to eight feet. This is a painting 14 by 18, so six to eight feet is a nice viewing. So step back, get up and step back. I don't have that there, so I have my one camera that I'm looking at right here, which is the one you see the whole picture together. That's set at eight feet. So when I'm looking at my monitor, which is right here, I can look right at my monitor, which is really handy. I don't have to get up and go back back there. But I can look at my monitor and see what that painting looks like at eight feet. So it's very important that you get up and get back there every once in a while and step back. Step back and take a look to see what you're generating there. I'm going to, and I can see there that I need to generate a little more dark. Right along here, I'm going to push this a little heavier with my brush. I want to generate some more dark right along that water line right there. And just grab some of that nice, thick color. Maybe pull it down a bit here, but get a little bit more dark right in there. And we'll just pull some of that right off of my, I can barely, barely see my little guy there. I grew him once. If I have to, I dry him again. But, so I'm going to rinse that out. Now I rinsed that out with some water, okay? And because I have water in my brush, if I go to do all this stuff, if I come back in here and touch it, see how it pulls a hole? Now sometimes you see me use that fact. I can come back in, I can put in a blurry line, and I can come back and pull in little ripples and stuff like that into the water. You'll see me do that sometimes. So, But I know that water is what? Water is our solvent, so it'll pull a hole, so I have to be careful. If I don't want to pull a hole, I've got to, I go back and I dip my brush in some extender and I work it through my brush here, okay? And let's get a fresh paper towel. Take most of that off of my brush so that I don't pull a hole, I can just smooth that out. Water will pull a hole and we don't want to pull a hole, okay? So this will stay wet here for nice. Now what I'm going to do is take some of my sky colors and reflect it down into my water. So I'll take some of my blue and some of my white, maybe some of my violets here, which I had, that beautiful kind of sky color. And right around my man, a little guy that I'm going to paint here, I'm just going to reflect just drag this through here, and I want to vary it. Sometimes pull it up and down, 
get those nice verticals and horizontals working through here. And this is just my first look at it. I can add some more. This is my first look at it. Now this is still nice and wet. If this is not wet for you, if it is dried, what I suggest is that you continue to dry it. Then come back and put on a little extender, maybe a little burnt sienna, some greens and some yellows, just a light coat, and then come back and work over it again. You'll get a smoother effect if you work wet into wet. And so that's one reason why I like to do that. Right now, a little bit wet into wet. You'll see me work dry as well. But for this one right here today, I'm going to work wet into wet. So I want this to stay a little bit wet there. I'll let some of these other colors happen. But I want a little bit of that blue of the sky. And I could go a touch lighter and a touch more violet here. Right up into some of this area right in here. Working that through. Make sure you pull some verticals too verticals and horizontals and just move the color through right like that it'll give you a nice look now we can come back and add more of a water look to it in just a minute but this is a good way to start it right here just like that and uh, maybe a bit more light water movement ripply kind of stuff coming off of him right in here which will build up later now we can let that, I'm going to let that dry now because everything else I'm going to do on top of that will be done on this dry. So I got this nice kind of smooth layer here underneath and uh, that's where I'm going to start with, right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and we're going to start painting my little guy here. Okay, so we'll do that here and... I'm going to use a small, this is one of my favorite, number four filberts. And it's what I use a lot of times to paint the light to dark of one of my little figures here that I like to paint. Okay, so, and what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to take just some of these colors and some of the white, create this soft kind of light yellowy, maybe a little yellow kind of gray color. That's his hat. His hat is very, very noticeable there. And I'm going to set my hand here on this little uh, this little uh, what I could call a bridge kind of it, it keeps my hand it, in the old days this was called a mall stick and I'm going to set his hat in there now he's going to have a lot more white and I don't want to go white white yet but what I'm going to do mostly on him when I start this out it's like whenever I paint little figures with you guys I always say I break them into the light and shadow so I put where the light and the shadow, where do I see the light and the shadow on the little figure here? So I'll push the light, draw around where I see that light here onto his hat, okay? And then where I see the shadow onto his hat. And I generally, when I go to paint these like this, I'll do these little guys four or five times, painting the light and the shadow and slowly refining them until I get the look that I want. So I'm going to bring the light in here from the front so there'll be a light stroke right down the front. Light and shadow here. Uh, maybe a little bit of a light hit over onto this side here, right in there. Okay, And then I come look at the shadow. I look about the value or so of the shadow. I love this little shadow color here. And so I'll come right in here onto this side and I'll put in where I see the shadow here. Now this is my first look. It's gonna change. This is my first look. This is just the light and shadow that I see. And I'm not trying to put or blend it or anything. I'm just painting light and shadow. That's all I want is the light and the shadow of that hat. And maybe a little bit along the rim there. And I'll, I'll do it again and adjust that color one more time here in just a minute. So I'll continue down. We have a nice, and this blue and this burnt sienna makes a nice shadow. Sometimes in some little figures, I paint them mostly a monochromatic, almost light and shadow first, you know, so I lost his little arm drawing here, so I'll add that back in there. That's where his little arm's gonna be. 
maybe a touch more blue into that shirt right there a little more shadow in there so and then I'll look where do you see the shadow on the other side up here it's gonna come off of his his shoulder here and I've lost all of that so I'll just draw it back in I don't know sometimes why I draw this because I lose it usually into the painting and then we'll bring his his arm up here and it's gonna go quite a bit in shadow so right up here so we'll give that just a quick and I love a little bit of that burnt sienna coming off of there see and uh, but you keep it you know when you're painting figures like this you break it into light and shadow and then you keep them as simple as possible Ooh, I like that strong blue start little phthalo blue there let's drop some of that right down here underneath his vest and down his backside here right down towards the water here and let that simplistically just kind of paint there down into the water and the thing is you know when I first started painting figures and stuff I over painted them and what I mean by that is I tried to get everything perfect like you see a little hand you see a little face and everything you know and then I started to you know paint more of the impressionism where you let the viewer kind of kind of do that for you you don't need that you let the viewer kind of do that for you so I'm just going to come in here and let some of this light dark here will come in here just let some of this light dark here paint into to that some of this light and shadow here we'll add that a few times but that's going to create the reflection there look of him coming in here there like that let's get uh, maybe a little bit more of that burnt sienna and stuff here let's look for that shadow here on to this basically all of this is a lot of shadow and uh, we get more of a reflected light on the back here of this of his vest his fishing vest here which is goes a little bit more yellow here a little lighter a little more yellow here let's just drop in some of that color and this is where I will touch this vest many times with color as I go to paint him in many times and I will look for light and shadow so here I'm gonna put in quite a strong light and you're gonna see that so I'm gonna pick up quite a strong light maybe strong little yellow here pick this up here and we're gonna hit that right on his shoulder boom right there and just tap the edges off just a bit break up those edges just a bit Okay, and you see that strong contrast does a lot for his, for this little guy. Here it's going to be the front of his creel here. Boom, just a bit of that light. Tap that off just a bit there. Okay, uh, maybe a, a little shadow mark in there. This is where I'll come back and add maybe a little shadow mark right there. And slightly different little light I'll tap on the edges of that just to give it a little different look there maybe the front of his pants there get just a quick little hit right there okay um, and let's come in and let's make that stronger light blue his is more of a blue violet so we'll keep that a stronger light blue violet here We'll pick up some of that. Not real light, but we could. Here, let's just pick up some of that. And let's just quickly hit a little mark. That's a little bit too light, not quite blue enough. So let's pick up a little more blue. Hit that right there. And again, look, look for the, just the taps and the light and shadow. That's all we want to paint is the light and shadow so 
you know, we don't we don't want to get wrapped up in a whole bunch of details here. Let's just hit a little bit maybe right out here just to say we did it. You know, you might, I don't have any showing up on the photo, but I might hit just a, a touch like you see a little bit of his shirt underneath there. Maybe a stronger, stronger, I have a lot of brown in that, so maybe a stronger blue underneath that right there. Okay. And, and then I start, once I got that real light, then I can come back and hit that first light I started. I can come back maybe and hit that again, depending upon how much contrast interest that I want to give to the little guy here. Maybe hit a couple of little, see a couple of little shine marks and stuff like that. Do a lot of things. Those little shine marks aren't over there, but I do them anyway because I want to do them anyway. <laughs> You know, you got to have, you know, it, it's like I'm, I'm the judge now. I'm, I'm making a painting that I like. Maybe just take one of them out there. I'm making a painting that I like, that I want, okay? And so I see that there. Now, I'm going to rinse that blue out for just a second, and he has no face, so I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and just get rid of all that moisture out of there, a little bit of white. Burnt sienna, a little white, a little yellow here. Nice darker little touch of flesh. And I'm just going to, I'm going to give this, see what the value is. Yeah, I can push that in there. I can go light and darker with that. It's kind of like right in the middle. So I'm going to hit it just a touch lighter right into the front, right? Just a touch there. And a touch of shadow right here at the back. Oops. Too much light. Wipe that out of my... I love painting on a towel like this so I can just wipe it sometimes. Get rid of that excess. Let's just touch right through that. Push that shadow right there. See, so it's very simplistic. Gives just the idea of it. Let's use that shadow here to give him the little hand. One there, a little pointed slightly. Okay, and... Uh, then we'll hit just, and again, it's just a little mark. Think of more of just painting it in light and shadow. Just a touch there to emulate his hand there. That's all he needs, see? Okay, so let's, uh, one of the things I will do, I'm going to put a little bit of open medium in this right now. And is as I'm going to paint around, I'll take some of this lighter color gray, a little blue here, and I'm going to work some of this light right around his face here, and I'll be a little careful. This is where I want to create that nice, soft movement in here, so I'm painting more specific right in there, and that's popping him forward. See how that's popping him forward here? So I'll be a little careful right in here. I took out part of his hat there. But sometimes leaving a little blurry edge just helps you quite a bit. Let's, um, I'm going to use a little bit of extender. I use extender when I want this color to slide more transparent. You know, let's use that more transparent sliding right in here on this side. Just work that back and forth. So I get this feeling of light and shadow moving around him there. That's what I want. Light and shadow. And... We can, uh, while this starts to dry up a bit, we can hit a few other areas of a little more dark. And the thing is, see, when I'm painting like this, I'm painting more tones and less, less, um, less blending and stuff like that that you see. And that's the real thing, you know, we, uh, uh, how much blending you're going to do. When I paint those figures, I try to do the light and shadow like we're doing here, the light and shadow. Now, I may come back, see, like into his back. Once I have that in, I might come back, and then I do what is called broken color. Broken color is where you, if you feel it's like light and shadow, and then you want to start softening it, we soften it with slightly other tones or colors that are slightly different. Like maybe I take a little... Burnt Sienna here, just a touch of the, the um, Daryl Light Yellow, and I push a little bit of that into the back of that vest. See, I get that nice Burnt Sienna, that, some of those colors that you might see up in here. And 
you know, I, I will come through and add a few of those colors through the painting, and that adds the interest to it. So, you know, that, that little color would make a nice addition to a little shadow here onto the back of his hat, maybe right in there. You can also use a soft blue like I used. So here, so the soft blue would be more of a, a reflected light kind of color that comes on this side of the vest there, you know. And so maybe it just a little addition. So what I do is I start to paint a little bit more colors and stuff onto it. So that soft blue here can go right between the light and shade right there. And it softens that exchange. So you can come in here like I've showed you before with little half tones or something like that. I feel I need that stronger a shoulder shadow line right up here pulling down like it shows on him there. So maybe that pulls down that way there like that. And that, you know, that puts that in there pretty good. There's that little uh, coming off of here. He has that little net here that goes down towards the water so we'll just emulate that right there but you could take like right here on his backside there you could put a little bit of that burnt sienna right in there is a nice little touch you know and um maybe restate some of your shadows a bit there as well you know so i'll repaint back up in there back and forth several times until i get that little guy the way i like him there now uh, I do like the light that's coming in there with him and we go all the way to a real light violet so I'm going to go back to my flat here and I'm going to take my blue and some of my violet here and make that light violet now one of the things I like to do that's still wet there so I, I can find but if it's not you can give a light coat of extender sometimes if it starts to dry up, what I'll do is just give a light coat of extender. Now, there's other things that you can do, like I showed you in other water. You can take a light coat of this open medium and extender together, mix it up, and it makes a real slippery kind of medium, but it also has a little bit of stick to it. And I like painting water with that. I'll push that right over the surface here because I like how it slides and grabs and, and works that way with the, the surface. The whole thing is all of us like different kinds of surfaces and I do like painting on that surface. It's kind of slick. So I'll take some of that light and violet there and just pull that across here. And you can see I can get a, a bunch of different looks to that, lightening up this a bit right in here. and really and maybe even break that up into his arm a bit there you know leave some of that pull that out this way and you can you can fracture and shadow the edges of it if you take some of your darker color back here you can pull back into it and just fracture and set these edges so that you're painting just little bits of it of this light see letting it shimmer back up in through there Every once in a while, make a nice, strong little, like, shadow. Boom, like that's the reflection of, a, of an edge of a tree or something like that. And just leave that little bit of light and shadow there. But I'll go back and forth with some of my colors. So right in here would be a nice place to pull that a couple times here. And I'll pull very slow, and I'll pull very... Um, very, uh, I want to say precise almost right there. Now, I need to, I don't have, and I'll fix that right now, a little dark. You know, I don't have his, his shoulder, line, his elbow line here out far enough down. Needs to come out and down just a bit more, like you see in the photo there. So I misdrew that just a bit. I want to bring that I like that arm sitting out a little farther before it goes back up there and this is what I'll do is I'll start to change it like this and and it's it's not a bad thing to change see and I'll and then I'll paint back what I don't need with that light color sometimes leaving a little bit of a blurry edge because that blurry edge adds 
so much to my painting here. And so I'll leave that. Let's put a bit of that light right in here. Right in here, narrow that down a bit. There, there we go. Let's put a little bit more light right in there. That looks pretty good. And uh, then I'll go back here, I'll correct that. I'm gonna correct that with my uh, smaller little brush here. Some of that dark. And you know, I do this a lot. I go back and forth until I get the shape exactly what I like. But I, I envision everything that I do here as the light and darks. That's how I, that's basically how I do it there. The light and dark of the painting here. So, yeah, that works. Maybe a, just clean up this edge just a bit here. I like sometimes just to blur that edge just a bit because, yeah, it makes it, makes it uh, more, recedes more, actually, the blurry little edge. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna here. Let's bring it back up over here towards the flesh. A little yellow burnt sienna. Let's get that into that hand here a bit more. Maybe a little darker here. Just an idea. Here we go. Just an idea of that, where that is on him. So <clears throat> I can use a little bit more. A strong dark is a, a nice violet. So, and even a touch of green with that makes a very strong dark. And I can use that right in here to really pop that shadow on that arm, this back long shadow there. It's really the figure is most is most wonderful when you have that real strong light and shadow. That's what really just grabs the figure. I'm going to round that just a bit of that shadow right there. And that's pretty good. Pretty good. I have a bit more of that lighter blue I can put on there. But like you see, you, you can play this a bit here. Let's get this back up a little higher, that shoulder line. There we go. Just a bit of that. So maybe a touch, and see it's a, I can even get just a touch lighter. If I decide I want just a little more hit of contrast to that guy. See, just a touch lighter, and it gives him just a touch more contrast which works pretty nice. Let's put that soft kind of violet around his face here, and I'll use that to thin down his face just a bit. A bit of it right there coming out, and that works pretty nice. And I do like on that other one, you see a bit of it just poking through some movement into the water here. So I'll just take this brush and just kind of like almost draw that water movement back in there that you see like right back up in there okay now all right let's go back so that sets that man and we might go back and do a little bit more on it more there but for right now he looks pretty good so let's go back let's take some a little bit lighter blue I'm going to start adding a bit of open medium now with what I do too because I want these areas to stay a little bit more wet and a little bit thicker paint. So I'm going to take a soft blue. And in the painting, it doesn't appear to be a soft blue, but I'm going to put it back here because in a lot of landscapes when we paint, we always put, as we move further back into the horizon, we always put a lighter blue because as the angle changes, we get a nice reflection of the light. And you can see it in the other one. You don't see it in this one that I have that I'm using as a reference. But I know that that happens. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, you know, I started to, in those of you that have painted in the landscape courses, and we did, um, you know, a lot of the studies of the French masters in landscapes. This is what they do. It's one of the techniques they do to establish depth into the painting because it's basically what you're doing is painting the water here going to go around the corner 
So we'll add a bit of the other colors in here, but we'll paint this water around the corner. And here we go. And just like, you know, I, those of you that painted with me in landscape, Louis Ashton Knight, that's the man I really, really liked in painting the landscapes and how he did those. He always did that, put that light right around the corner slightly because that's what happens. That's what you see as your angle changes to the water. That water picks up the sky and reflects the sky. So we'll put that on, but then we'll come up here in front with those bushes and stuff and we'll end up putting those right in there right like that some green some yellows and we'll just make this come right around the corner we'll take a slight reflection of some of those down so now whatever i paint up into the bushes and stuff i'm also going to paint down into the water here as well as i uh, start to paint some of that that nice little river here coming around the corner. A little bit of that violet here as this is gonna come around the corner here. We'll add some of that. I'll smear, sometimes I smear it and drag it down and you know, sometimes I'll leave it, um, you know, you see it very soft over there. Sometimes I'll do it a little bit more harsh depending upon how much, like I'll leave a little line like that, you know. Those of you that come over from Bob Ross and stuff, you know, they always did that with a palette knife. You put that water's edge and stuff in there. A landscape uh, painter will do it a little softer, but you do, it is something that happens here. And so we'll just move that through. See, I like to just move that through. Now, if you're painting in oils, don't use your finger. Use these are non-toxic acrylic, so I can touch them like that. But if you're using oils and stuff, don't use it like that. And I'm going to come forward, so I'll move some of that. I'll move some of this light right down here. See, it, it paints on really easy now because this is starting to tack up. And what happens, and one of the reasons why I moved from oils to, I mean, from acrylics to from oils, is... I would put this light on and it would start wiping out everything that I did before. And so I start, I started to control what happens by the drying time of the paints. And I would let some of the acrylics dry up and then I can get solid, you know, better lights and movements through the water and stuff and light by my acrylics. Whereas with the oils, sometimes they would blend too much and I would, you know, it, I would just kind of have to repaint areas many times because I touch it and it disappear the area would disappear so I'm going to start adding that open medium start some of this that's a little bit too violet let's get a bit more blue into that here model this up a bit push a little bit of that right up through there and so I just want to softly pull some of these colors down, but I do want to make some nice hits of some of these colors. You see that color over there, and I'm going to watch it to see as it's drying down if it might not be too much, but I'll push some other light right in here, right with that, right like that. And uh, But I do like when I'm coming in towards my center of interest, I do like to uh, get some of those colors, those, you know, brighter little colors and stuff happening. And so that one works really well. And I'm not going to, I'm going to take that impressionist uh, key and not finish off over here. Just let the eye pull right into where this little guy is right here. Maybe even advancing um, the shadow here again right here nice darker shadow right in there right like that pull that down a bit just nice and blurry down there and you know you can you can take your cue from some of those nice wavy little marks that move horizontally there through the painting or drag a little line down there 
so that, you know, it kind of looks like his little arm there, you know, uh, which is what's happening over there. And you can put little touches of light. I mean, you can paint more precise. I like to paint impressionism here. I'll tap it around and just paint the impression of him here. Let's get some of that light with some of this. And let's just, we're just, I'm not going to paint it perfect here. I'm just going to whisper some of these colors on here. Drop this down a bit. Here. And I'm going to let this, you know, take the rules of Impressionism here. And just kind of let that fade away there just a bit. But I've got a, almost a tangent line here, so I want to increase that light right up here so that you pick up the light coming through him and that will make the painting have a little bit better look, a little bit more depth. So you pick up a light coming through him there. Okay, so a little different than that one, but I like that. And I'm gonna increase here now. I'll take some of my burnt siennas, some of my greens, maybe a touch of blue into that. And I'll increase just a few areas here some of the shadow, shadow marks, and different colors. See the colors coming off my brush a little different? Some of the blue, burnt siennas, some of those different colors coming off there. And you can see a lot of, uh, hor uh, a lot of uh, verticals here because of the reflections. So I will add those. Now you can also add these later after you add your bushes and stuff, but I kind of know where I'm going to go with those. Now, okay, so we've got that. We've got those edges in there. I want to redefine that dark one more time up in some of that area there in the very back. Some nice violety darks into that burnt sienna right back up in here. Nice core darks. Very, very dark colors. Some of the darkest colors of the painting. Restate some of those right along that water's line, that water line right in there. And again, see what it does is it pulls some of that stuff here nice and forward. We can have a bit of that dark climb just a little higher maybe onto the trees. Maybe that dark, sometimes when that dark gets too dark, you, you hit it with a little burnt sienna which pertain, which helps the dark, but that burnt sienna, and that's a nice little trick to remember. It's a landscaper trick of that burnt sienna, but it adds a warmer dark, which causes it to actually lighten the shadow just a bit. So you can see what that does there. So see, I got a nice dark edge there. And if I take a little bit of burnt sienna on it, it'll still preserve a lot of the dark, but it'll lighten it just because it's warmer and that works let's add just a bit here boom just a bit right there and maybe around the corner there we have to let it go a bit more atmospheric which is what we'll do but we'll just drag it a bit here there like that okay and got a I want to develop that corner just a touch more softer light blue just a bit more right here got that nice squeaky chair that's bothering me here just a bit more there we go that's better that's better a little crooked water right around the corner of that now all we have to do is come through here now and we have to add some lights through some of this some lights up into this area here some lighter yellow greens let's go and so I'll take some yellow some yellow oxide and some pine green let's start adding little bits of that imagine imagine light and shadow now lights on the the right side here. So imagine light and shadow here, different areas of it hitting. Okay. Here's 
And we don't want to, I don't want to get a tremendous amount of green here because I want this sometimes into the fall look. So just add some vision, a few little things going on there. Sometimes I'll take the edge of my, of my brush here and do this. See this little scratch marks that you can get as you scratch through the edge, the ferrule there. And so you can get some highlights there. You can also do that with um, the small, small edge of your palette knife, painting knife. That works as well. Let's get a bit of this. There. Okay. Little yellow hits. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tap it like this and I'll hold my brush flat and just create some little touches to the bushes here. Try to keep it as impressionistic as possible. Just let your brush kind of drag around through there like that and it'll make the little highs and lows and if you get too much boy you can come back with burnt sienna with that and just paint some of that out there like that you know there's just all kinds of nice looks that you can get right along the edge of those bushes there maybe a bit more yellow up here to the top of this tree maybe a touch more light of the yellow and green you can even go to a little little a little of that Hansa yellow which is your brighter yellow yellow green here and add some of that little touches to that light side there that's a bit much so I'll paint it out I'll just push that out here and see I try to push and paint I try not to make a, a brush, you know, a, a specific stroke. I want this all to be what I call impressionistic. So I want all of my marks to be just very different. So you look throughout that reference. See, so you just get all these different kind of feel to the marks. And that's what I'm trying to emulate here is some of the different colors that I see here, but not make it... Uh, you know, absolutely perfect. Sometimes down low, right across the shadow, you can just add a few more little like branches and stuff coming out and across there. That just, you know, adds more interest there. You put on, I always put on too many and then start to paint them out. Tap them out, paint them out. But those little marks just add so much interest, especially right along your water line here. You know, maybe it's, something right there and you got a little shadow underneath it there there like that and so what you do up through here is I could come in and you know work some more in there um, you know work more color in here and let me just take the larger brush, in other words, show you what as I could take some of this light and just gently just push this light running off this side. In other words, you know, clean up some of this, the painting here to the edges. Or you can leave it very much this raggedy impressionistic edge, which is what I like. Maybe I'll take this little edge right here, though, I'll push that right off to the side, and then I'll let it come right back here just uh, you know fading away just like that you know I like those kinds of looks there's a and I might take just a touch of this color and just add it as a mark right in there there all different kinds of ways you know and you can I like to use my reference photos but I don't like to copy them I like to use them as ideas and um, work it and work it and work it here sometimes i'll work these several times let's get this i do like that little edge there you know it could have some more more stuff going on maybe some darker greens that kind of stuff back here you know more edges there that's kind of neat um you can put more planes more more 
you know, little hits. And this is why I always say, start, you know, we start out really big and then we start getting smaller little hits of color and everything like right back here. Pushing in a little bit of the horizontal here. Makes it look like a little bit into the grassy plains back there. See? You can angle the stroke to make this look like a bit of a slope right there. Just like that. So you can slowly add smaller marks. Like clean this line just a bit. Pull a smaller mark. Make that look like a little bit of a plane of or something pulling down. Change the mark up, change the color a little bit, pull that right back there. All kinds of ways, fun ways. This is what I really enjoy about the landscape here, is just kind of picking out how we're going to do that, you know, and put in that mark. I'm going to clean this out of my brush, and I'm going to push just a little bit more light violet into it and then it's kind of up to you what you want to continue to do put more contrast on your little guy i've got to put his fishing pole and stuff in which i'll do but uh it's kind of up to you a little more blue into that let's just see sometimes i leave that and Let's just pull some of that. Sometimes I'll just start to do the little marks of that, like the little ripples and stuff. Sometimes I use a smaller brush. Sometimes I drag it like that. You've seen it in other paintings where I just kind of take it here and I drag across the surface like this, which gives that broken line to it here. And I can push it out soft at wherever I want. Sometimes I like that broken line coming there. And maybe right through here, a little bit of that broken line. Moving through that, that shadows of ripples there. Moving through. Let's put a bit lighter. And some of that broken line right down here. Boom. And see, I'll pull through it, maybe pull and push and blur it out a bit. Here, just give some of that movement to it there. And this should actually be a little bit more of an angle like you see there coming off of him, this water. Working, and that's what you do. You just push back and forth and get that water moving right off of him there. Maybe uh, a little bit of that shadow. If I want that shadow nice and thick, that's where I add a little open medium to it here. That'll give me a, a really a lot of control, the ability to paint out. Sometimes I, well, you see me, and I always said it in other videos, paint, I paint out what I don't need with the shadow. I'll put on too much light and then paint out what I don't need into the shadow. So with the shadow. So I could actually touch a little more shadow. Tap that around there, which gives you that feeling of movement of the water there. There like that. And you can get closer to that. You can put more of the edge in there. But you know, one of the things that I do when I painting like this is I use that photo for reference, but I'm not going to copy it. I get into a copy, I'll start making the painting stiff, okay? So I don't get into that copy mode. I don't want to copy exactly what I see. I just want to use it for the reference of what it is that I see. Now, I also have this brush. You know, we can use that to soften that a minute. But this brush, you've seen me in other landscapes. I will use this to, especially towards any final little touches. Sometimes when I'm doing those bushes and stuff. I like little, the little, what I call the sparks of color. So this is a round brush that I, a round brush, bristle, that's in our line. It's a round bristle. And I took it and hit it with a hammer, flattened it out. And then I pull these hairs back like this. And it gives me all kinds of little hairs to just touch little sparks of interest here. Little sparks and uh, movement lines and 
stuff like that. And so sometimes, like I'll pick up a little more light with that, is I'll come in and just touch, and it gives just perfect little sparks and grasses and stuff. You've seen me use this all over the Western paintings. I love to use that, but I'll tap that right through some of these other areas there just to create a little bit of sparks and interest and stuff like that as well. I think what I'm going to do is, before I call this, is I am going to spark up that back side of his hat just a bit here. Correct this one line here. I do like it blurred out, but maybe just a little bit more right there, and then it can blur out. And um, maybe right to that front line of his arm. I'll use this a little darker right up here, a little bit more careful. And see that just that brings that so far forward there by making that line a little bit more perfect. Now, um, for the, you can use a liner brush or something like that for the, you know, when you're gonna come in, I use a liner brush like this. You can use that for, you know, giving him his, his fishing rod here, which is uh, basically you're gonna touch from his hand and pull out this way here. I'm gonna make that just a bit thicker there. And this is the thing is, you know, so I'll use a liner brush. A lot of times, a lot of times, I use a, a flat brush to do it. And one of, the, one of the things I do a lot is I take my flat brush when I'm done, I rinse out because you're acrylic, and some of the color there underneath there is dry. And then I take my flat brush with just a little bit of water, which is our solvent, and I run it right along the edge there, and that will thin it out to the exact uh, thinness that I want to give that the idea of that fishing rod there. So in the reference photo, you see a little bit of it, and then it just fades away. And that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to pull down some of my shadows here again. And that's up to you as how much you're going to blur those shadow lines and work that. But you know, they're fun little paintings like this. These are fun to do. I can increase the shadow over here. And see, with this dry over here, I can increase that shadow really easy, just as a little bit of a glaze. Just let that shadow just sit right over the surface there as a little bit of a glaze. Let's rinse that out for a second. Just And since I don't want to pull a hole, I put a little bit of extender in it. And I'll just whisper that over. See, it's just like washing color over it a bit. And uh, gives me kind of a nice look there. So you could continue down here. You can put some of that reflection. You can put a little bit more movement. Maybe I'm going to tap some light and this blue together right here. And we'll create the idea of a little ripple right here, which comes off of him right there. That adds some interest, some line interest right in there, which is kind of nice, not taking away. It's a little bit more than what you have over there, but it's not taking away from it, so I kind of like it. Sometimes I, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll create a little ripple here with the light, and that pulls through like that, so you can see it hitting him. Sometimes we're in shadow, you know, and you can look at the other photo there, and you can see, it, it kind of swirls around. You can look at the reference there. It kind of swirls around right there, swirling around him here. And that uh, I can just emulate here. But, you know, how much you're going to do, that's up to you. I like to, I like to keep the, the painting very much an impression, which means I don't want to get too close to realism. I like the impression, the brush marks. That's what I like in a painting. So, you know, to me, that that's one of the best things. So there you go. There's a nice little thing. And you can see those clouds soften down. You can build them up a little bit more. You can build the hills and stuff like that up a little bit more. I like the simplistic of, you know, the simplistic look. I might, just because you can't stop painting sometimes. <laughs> you know, you got to love to paint. I love to paint. I love to try things. 
and sometimes we make mistakes but i love to try things i think i'm going to increase this light strike right here on his shoulder just a bit more i like that it could be see how light it is over there on him it could be and that's what i look for the light and dark i could just small down a little bit lighter with the hit just like that and, and i'm a little bit crooked and i want to be a, a touch straighter and so i do want to touch straight. oh that's boom nailed it no. <laughs> it's a little big but that's okay but that gives you kind of an idea. Now, see, if you were going to break that down, you're on a shadow. And if you wanted to small that down a little bit, maybe do it. Think of switching the color. Don't think of using the blue and stuff. Think of switching the color and using that burnt sienna, like right on the edge there. See, that's the broken color. See that little bit of glowy warmth. You don't pick it up over there, but that little bit of glowy warmth on that just adds so much to him. Now, that will dry down a bit which is what it'll do and uh, become a little bit darker as it dries so I haven't lost my mind it is a touch light but uh, boy I'm going to have to oil this chair <laughs> this is bothering me there you go there you go something like that but uh, the impression is of them you know painting the figure so I have a couple of these little fisherman dudes that we've painted together and you can see I do the light and dark and very simplistic on the back edges the receding edges of it I do like to blur it out so you don't see exactly all of the details now you could you know for let me show you something here when and then I'm gonna stop but you know on the original uh, he has that light coming down this side right there and you know that helps him outline and I'm going to do this and then blur it because I like how he looks but you see you can pop that edge of him out there just a bit but I like to blur it slightly so that what it does is it puts in that receding edge and all you really pick up is the light and dark of him there and you know that's what really keeps him now I could have a you know, if I wanted to be absolute precise, a little bit touch of that flesh color and all that kind of stuff. That's all for you guys to do to decide. Um, I have found that over the years of doing this that the faster and more simplistic I paint them, the more I like them. So I don't want to get wrapped up in too much detail. But I could put a little bit for like right where his finger touches up there onto that uh, pole. I know that's hard to see. Um, but, you know, that would uh, pick that up and you know just give them that extra little light so that's all up to you but anyway kind of fun you could develop these up a little bit more develop the bushes up and stuff a little bit more but overall I think that's a nice fun little painting you can blur these out just see how wet this is so if you want to get that softer water feel to it see you can blur see how wet why is that so wet because I use that extender an open medium like I did on several of the other river videos there I showed you how to paint water and keep it wet with that extender and open medium together boy it stays wet for hours like four or five hours gives you lots of time to work something like that that's all up to you um, I do like some of those colors right there those those um and those fall colors this is where you just I mean it's up to you we want but maybe some of those fall colors seems like sometimes lately I just can't stop painting you know but that's okay so maybe some of those fall colors come right down in here again picking up with the blue and those falls right there that's kind of pretty picks that up it you know carries those colors from the other part of the painting in you know that's kind of pretty Look, try, you know. I mean, how long does this take us to paint this? You know, an hour and a half or so, whatever. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take very long. And you can play and try. That's all it is. And you learn. You play, you try, you learn. Be brave. Give it a try. You know, and the other thing, let me just talk to you as a teacher, a longtime painter also. Some of you write on there, you know, some of them on the, my Facebook page and stuff they put up there. Oh, your flowers, everything, you're so pretty. I'm never going to be able to paint with that. That is such a defeatist attitude. Don't have that. I mean, 
I, I, there's a lot of paintings I screwed up. There's a lot of paintings that I screwed up that I felt I screwed up that I sold for a lot of money. Don't, don't say you can't do it. Everything you can do, it just takes practice. That's all it does. You know, I, I, I don't know what it is about people today sometimes. They just say, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'll never be able to paint like you. Of course not. What I want to do is make you a better painter, a better artist that paints like you. You don't have to paint like me. You're going to use me as an idea man, as a reference man, as to, you know, what's the possible way you can approach something. You don't need to copy the way I paint. And if you find that artist inside of you, inside of you, it will be better because it'll be your painting. It won't be a copy of my painting, okay? But everyone can do it. Don't say you can't do it. Everyone can, all right? All right. So there's an idea of this little guy. I have another... Um, Another landscape and western and flowers and birds and people. And those of you going to join me right along, I'm going to be painting a portrait of my son in honor of my son. And uh, so we'll be doing that one as well. I've got, matter of fact, you can see the back of it. I got the frame in and I got the very high quality Belgian linen in. Um, just to make that canvas is going to be about $260 just to make that high quality canvas that I'm going to do in that portrait on and so i'll be showing you guys all that stuff anyway lots of fun stuff i'll see you guys hope you enjoyed it i'll see you guys on the next one